So we jumping in right with the alpha. The game started in 2013 and pretty much copied a lot of different mechanics from Minecraft as a survival simulator. For example, there was zombies, all elements of the craftsmanship and ability to kill other players. Making houses is also was there. Zombies were removed from the game pretty soon as the alpha version got more players than it. Rust Early Access it was called Legacy Rust back in the day, and devs tried to refine the game as much as possible. They improved graphics and added some new resources like explosives and more weapons. Devs also added some anti-radiation costumes, so you were able to explore more areas now. Rust 2015 Graphics become much more better, we got a lot of new cosmetics as well as a new camera and guitar. Game acquired quite a few tools and weapons like mace, cleaver and longsword, but the main one being the crossbow. It was easy to craft and help to kill more leveled opponents in a few shots. Rocket launcher is also one of the awesome weapons we get, but it was really hard to craft though. This year we also get the first update, which was a Christmas event. Rust 2016 this year was pretty huge, devs added a lot of improvements, did a lot of bug fixes and did a lot of patches to bring the game to the top. We also received a wide range of new weapons like semi-auto ER, the LR300 AR, the MP5 and the double barrel shotgun. It changed a gunfight and made it more fun. Flamethrower was also one of the new amazing weapons to play with in this time. The game also received new points of interest such as Lighthouse and the Red Town on Happy's Island. Rust 2017 Wedding machines were added in 2017 to give you an opportunity to trade. It helped to avoid different scams and schemes from the other players who tried to steal your loot. After all these updates, Rust not only became a serious hardcore survival game, but also became more fun since we get the gambling option and spinning wheel as well. But at the same time, new great problem appeared, and it was technical issues. Since looking long distances in Rust was a really big deal, devs decided to add binoculars, which improved strategies a lot. Also, we get a new defense mechanism for houses, like a shotgun trap. After 4 years since the game's release, we finally, finally get the most insane feature ever for the games, and it was the hair. We don't know why it took so long to fix it, but hey, <laughs> we finally had it. New points of the interest were also added to the game, new quarries, a launch site, pumping station, abandoned boat and a junkyard monuments. A lot of players use tactics with building around these points, so they constantly get a huge amount of loot and pretty big bounties on their heads. Rust 2018 Finally, we get out of the early access and get a full release of the game. The development became more stable and brought much more regular updates. There were two different versions of the game, main and stage branches, which allowed you to test new updates. In a bit we get the new vehicle update that allows you to travel with up to four people in the car. Fuel was a big deal though, cause every map grid cost you one fuel to travel. The Chinook event were brought to the transport helicopter was a pretty interesting one. It allows you to resupply monuments and also patrol some areas to neutralize threats. After it, you had a possibility to get to the drop zone and release the payload. You had to bring the loot crates here, but we all know that was quite difficult to do. The crate had a high-tech lock mechanism requiring some time to disarm it, and it allows other players to counter you and steal it from you. The Happy Island has finally received some love and some improvements of the old areas and in new caves and tunnels. A bit later, we get the compound added to the game. It was a scientist controlled area intended to function as a safe zone implementing rules of having no weapons, no looting, no killing or sleeping. If you broke the rules, deadly tourists would kill you in a blink of an eye. Beside it, we get a possibility to use the first set of vending machines which sell a variety of items including clothes, tools, supplies, etc. Diving gear was also added to the game, diving goggles get you more clear underwater visibility, wetsuit granted cold and wet protection, flippers increase your speed underwater but gives a slower land movement. Diving cylinder help you breathe underwater for up to 10 minutes. Later this year we get a puzzle update. You needed different cards to access different monuments. On the 5th July 2018 we got a new team update, which allowed you to create teams and invite different players to it. The maximum size of the team was 
8 people and it helped you to coordinate better with your allies and save a lot of time on resource farming for example. Later we get the Bandit Camp update. It had a lot of bandit enemies and a dredge that contained the Cavino. New compound bow also appeared in the game. It was pretty strong and allows you to get your enemies from pretty far distances. A bit later devs released a cargo ship update. You must approach the cargo ship with a boat and mount one of the ladders on its sides with the use key. Attempting to jump to the ladder from one moving boat to another is almost impossible. When on board and after clearing it defending scientists, you can be hacking the two codlocks crates. You also had to defend the ship until access was granted. New L96 rifle, a new scope and a tactical gloves were also huge addition to the game. Also we got an 8x scope that was insanely useful in long range fights. A bit later hot air balloon update just dropped out. Up, up and away. Hot air balloons are in along with the anti-air missiles to take them down. There's a new type of a cargo ship, nerves and more stuff brought into the game with this one. Did you like to fly around on balloons guys? Tell me in the comments. Rust 2019. We've got an air power update. Electricity is no longer limited to the wires. You can now send information between circuits wirelessly. To facilitate this system, devs added some new items. In a few weeks we received the oil rig. This monument can be found offshore a bit farther than the cargo ship patrol and will definitely require a team to conquer. It had a pretty big amount of scientists, heavy scientists and crates. Later on June 2019 we get a pretty cool update with the horses, so now you had a possibility to ride around. Horses had two bars, health and stamina. Rust 2020. Modular vehicles update. Spawning near the roads, modular vehicles will be encountered heavily damaged with a random section of the models and no fuel. To get them up and running, players will need to source both fuel and engine parts of any quality. Taking the vehicle to the compound and allowing players to customize them with additional seating, storage, water tanks and more. After it, we received the Boat Wender update, which was released in the September, bringing to the game the Kayak, new craftable item that allow you to take to the seas in a more primitive fashion. Once deployed, you can sit on the Kayak and use a paddle to move. The paddle can also be used as a melee weapon, including using a thrown weapon. With this new update, we also get the new fishing villages, in which we can acquire a rowboat or a reeb. There were a total of three fishing villages added to the game. Later, the elevator update. The elevator was a new deployable object that allows you to easily travel between floors in your base. Stables update released November 5th, and you will now be able to acquire horses at one of the two new monuments, the ranch and the large barn. Also, we got telephones with this update. Catch up with the friends and a prank call your enemies with a new telephone deployable. Once deployed and connected to the power, you can use the telephone to call and any other telephone on the island. Simply enter the number, simply enter a number, hit the tile, and the other phone will start ringing and can be picked up by anyone. Right Transit Line update released in March 2021. You'll now find the train entrances scattered across the world. Typically, you'll find the entrances next to the existing monuments. Upon the first inspection, they may not appear to be anything special, but after venturing inside deep below the train, you'll now find a vast rail network with drivable work cards. Gestures update. This one was pretty huge for people who enjoy to play silently and with a great roleplay as a SWAT team. These new gestures have been built to be used as a first person, so you get nicely animated hand movements instead of just seeing your shadow gesture. This new system for gestures is a bit more flexible than the old system and it already supports some features like looping animations and third person gestures. May 2021 is probably one of the biggest updates ever came to the game, World Revamp. Rust has received a huge visual update, the biggest to date, from the new terrain trees, rocks, cliffs, decors, grass, monuments reworks and so much more. This is the culmination of the work by several people that took place and off over the couple of the years. 
greatly improves how the game feels and gives it a fresh look. Literally every single bird worked and shines with the new colors and amazing textures. And in just a month we got a wanted update with the Voices Props DLCs. Players now go to the crawling state when wanted in most cases instead of being fully incapacitated. They can move around slowly and use doors. They also get a bit more health than they used to in the old incapacitated states. This might allow you to move to relative safety. Going Deep is an update that released August 5th, 2021. The new underwater labs are fully procedural dungeons that reside on the ocean floor. They will come in a variety of shapes and sizes and from now with the two entry points. You enter them at the moon pool in which they resurface with your submarine. From there, make sure that you have come prepared to the face of the righteous puzzles and offer. You can now buy a submarine from the boat shops and fishing villages. Submarine seats up to two with internal fuel access and an instrument cluster including the rudimentary sonar. Look around behind and you'll see the interaction UI to swap seats. Missions and QL update. You are now able to speak to various NPCs found around the world and receive a list of objectives you must complete in exchange for a reward. This first pass of missions are geared more towards the players just getting started but the system is capable of much more. A MLRS and a Desert Base update released on November 4th, 2021. Devs added a fully procedural military bases harboring the MLRS equipment. These are different on every server and every wipe. Each has a few points of entry, regular loot with a sprinkle of oil and you will face some resistance from the scientists as well. The new desert military base monuments each have a parked multiple launch rocket system MLRS. This vehicle doesn't move, you won't be driving it around the map, but it can be set up for fire rockets to any targets, except safe zones naturally. Rust 2022. The Arctic update was the first major update in 2022. New monuments have been added. The Arctic research base will spawn exclusively in the Arctic biome. Those who are not afraid of the cold winds and the frigid temperatures will be able to explore the various lab models and building scatters around the base. You will find there a bunch of loot scavenge or take a little break from the warm yourself next to the electric heater. But most importantly, the Arctic research base will spawn snowmobiles. Snowmobiles take a low-grade fuel and have a small storage container on the back. They are fast on snow and sand and slow everywhere else. They drive smoothly even over the rough terrain but take some skill to control well. When you find one in the Arctic base, it'll have 20 fuel so ready to go. Zipline and Rail update released April 2022. The first iteration of the procedural rail network is now live. Any map size 4000, 2500 or larger should have a single railway in the shape of a ring going around the entire island. Just in a month we got a bow ground trains update. The above ground work card closely resembles the underground one, now has coupling points at each end that can connect to other train cars. The buggies, also known as the trucks, the wheel assemblies, have also been updated to rotate with the track more realistically. The combat update brought to the game some major fixes, new recoil, sounds and view models which have been updated. Devs also added heat punch and directional markers with large splotches of the blood covering most of the screen during the high damage encounters. And now the sweaty guys update, the hardcore mode. New game mode in Rust aimed towards the veteran players, gone are the comforts such as safe zones. The Lumberjack update. New addition to the Rust's permanent store is the Lumberjack pack. The Lumberjack pack contains 5 items, 4 tools and 1 hazmat rest skin. Halloween 2022 update. We got a hockey face mask, cultist deer torch, baseball bat and basically everything that horrific killer might need. And finally we get to the Rust 2023 industrial update. Bring the new levels of efficiency and unlock new avenues for automation with this month's set industrial entities. With these new tools you can move items around your base as well as craft items automatically without you needing to lift a finger through the pipes. And the last update for now is Eye in the Sky. The drone is a new player-controlled craftable deployable operated from the computer station, easily damaged from impacts, can be picked up and deployed just about anywhere, so you need to control it using a nearby computer station. We also got the control auto turrets, cameras and most importantly remotely detonated C4 for some big fun.